All right, I wanted to spend a little bit more time talking about parametric relations specifically. So these are our 1.5 class notes. Um, we'll be using these notes both days. You have two homework assignments from 1.5, but these notes for both of them. And so for parametric relations, first of all, they are really important, especially um, when you get into modeling the behavior of things in motion. Um, it's oftentimes easier to describe how it's moving horizontally and how it's moving vertically as separate um, equations with respect to time. And that's kind of what we see here. In physics, so physics equations for projectile motion in general, v sub zero of x, the sub zero means at time zero. Often this is called the, in, the initial velocity. So v would be how fast is it going initially at time zero? And x sub zero would be where it's positioned along the x-axis at time zero. So a specific example would be 60t. I interpret that as meaning, hey, it's going maybe 60 miles an hour, 60 um, meters per second. It kind of depends on what it is we're looking at. But over here, you can see a very faint graph on Desmos of when x, what x is with respect to time and what y, how high things are with respect to time. So at time zero, it hasn't started moving yet, right? At time zero, not going. But at time zero for y here, it's six, say six feet high already. All right, so think about if you're holding on to a ball and then you chuck it, right, it moves vertically, but it also moves, um, sorry, it moves horizontally, but it also moves vertically up and then it comes back down. And just the general case for physics, G stands for gravity, right, which is 9.8 meters per second squared or 32.2 feet per second. So seeing negative one half of 32 is about negative 16. I'm thinking here we're talking T is in terms of seconds because that makes sense to me. Again, I don't expect you to have these memorized. I just wanted to explain a little bit more um, how and where you're getting, where something like this comes from and why it's important. Specifically, I wanted to now spend some time using your calculator to go through example two. Um, example one, we should go through in class pretty thoroughly, but I wanted to spend some time going over this, showing you how to use your calculator to do that. So example two, Bend over, ha, 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 that's a joke name, hits a baseball 120 feet per second, right? So at time zero, he makes contact with the ball, right? And then he's sending it 120 feet per second at an angle of elevation of 50 degrees. The path of the ball is modeled by the parametric equations, x with respect to time, right? So my first equation, Really, this should be y sub 1 as well, I guess. But the first equation is 120 times t. So that 120 is coming from 120 feet per second, right? At an angle of elevation 50 degrees. So again, cosine of 50, that's my x value. So this is how much, right, it's affecting per time. And the y right? So 3 plus 120t sine of 50 degrees minus 16t squared. Again, this is coming from gravity is going to pull that ball back down. This has to do with the initial um, striking force. Um, that 3, what do you think that 3 means? Well, that's kind of question C right here. How high was the ball over the plate when Ben hit it? So how high is specifically asking about your y value? y equals what when t equals zero, right? When Ben hit it at time t equals zero seconds. Well, so that's really a very simple one. You plug zero in for t and find out what y is. And in this case, zero, zero, three, right? So three plus zero, zero is three. So how high was the ball? It was three feet, 
And how do I know it's in feet? Because it's talking about feet per second. So X is being measured in terms of feet and Y is being measured in terms of feet. Time is being measured in terms of seconds. Those are the units we're using. All right, so let's go backwards. So A, graph the path of the ball for six seconds, right, from time zero to time six. So that's over six seconds with a T step of 0.1 and over these windows. All right, so here's the how do we do that. So I'm going to pull up my calculator here. So open up a graph. And the first thing you need to do is go to menu, window, no, 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 graph entry, graph entry. And you want to choose parametric. So choose parametric. And now I want to enter into my parametric equations, my first equation for x. So that's going to be 120 times t, which I can just write 120t. Now, if I type cos for cosine, it doesn't recognize that as a function, so I'm going to hit times. And then if I type cos, notice how it just went straight. It knows that is cosine. Now, I'm going to type 50, right, for right now, and we'll see what happens. And then down here, right, for the y, I'm going to do 3, nope, no, undo. All right, try again. 120t times cosine of 50. And you're going to want parentheses there. All right, scroll down. And then we're going to go 3 plus 120t times sine, parentheses, 50, minus 16t squared. And then we said we wanted our t step t.1 and t go from 0 to 6. All right, so check. Yes. Hmm, now that to me, right, if I just kind of drag it over, that looks like a straight line. Hmm, that doesn't seem right. And it's because it's reading this as 50 radians, not 50 degrees. So there's two ways you can fix that. You can either, in the equation yourself, insert a degree sign you would do by using these special symbols here. So if you hit control to get to these blue, all these special symbols, there's your degree button, right? And then similarly down here, second insert degree symbol. All right, so let's try graphing this again. And now suddenly, oh look, it looks like the ball's going up, right? And what did the direction say? It said over a window 0 to 500, 0 to 150. So to do that, we're going to go to menu, window zoom, window settings. I want my x min to be 0, my x max to be 500. I want my y min to be 0. I want my y max to be 150. Okay. Oh, that sure looks like the nice path of a ball. Woo! Right? being hit, baseball being hit. Okay, the other thing you could have done to avoid typing that um, degree symbol is right here, right? You can go to menu settings and change the graphing angle to degree for this problem. And then if you don't type in the degree symbol, it'll work. So both ways. <clears throat> All right, so done. We have graphed it. All right, so yay. So I'm going to come back over here and say check. All right, now there's a 40-foot fence that is 400 feet away from home plate. Does the ball clear the fence? All right, so to draw the fence on our calculator, what do we need? We need x is 400 feet away. So if I'm looking at my calculator, really I just want to know, so here's 500. 400's may be somewhere right around here. So when x is 400, right 40 feet up is that is that too tall like does it does it come up above does the ball hit the fence or not so i'm going to do a second one so x2 is constant no matter what time it is the fence is always 400 feet away right for y2 we're going to be a little creative right i'm going to continue to use my 0 to 6 t seconds right and if i do that how can I grow a 40-foot fence, so to speak? Well, 
you can do 40 feet divided by um, six times t, so 40 t divided by six, because over, so at time zero, you'll be zero feet. At time six, six divided by six is one, you'll be 40 feet. So over the course of these six seconds, it will draw and grow, so to speak, 40 feet. This simplifies, by the way, instead of 40 over six, I'm gonna leave it there, but it simplifies to 20 over three. And ta -da -da -da, there's my fence. And that's what's happening right here, where it says to draw the fence, use these two functions, right? Because that we don't want a line infinitely going up when t, when x is 400, right? We want to cap it. We want it to be only 40 feet tall. So that's where this came from. And so based on the picture, is the ball going to clear the fence? Yes. Based on my graph, this keeps going and it, there's, there's a gap there. How much of a gap? How can we figure that? How could we figure this out algebraically? Well, to figure out algebraically, if it will clear the fence, right? So does it clear the fence? Yes. How would we do that algebraically? Well, you want to figure out when x is 400, come back over here, when x is 400 equal to 120t cosine 50 degrees, can you figure out at what time, right, at what time in the path, right, at what time in the path does it reach 400 feet over? 400 feet horizontally? And the answer is yes. Solve this for t, right? So if you solve this for t, t is going to equal, well, 400 divided by 120 times cosine of 50 degrees. And you can use your calculator to do that. So let's do that. So I'm going to come over here. I'm going to open up a new page. I'm just going to go calculator. And I want to know what is 400 divided by parentheses 120 times times cosine of 50. I'm going to just type in the degree symbol so there's no issue there. 50 degrees, close parentheses, close parentheses. And lo and behold, it's going to give me a beautiful trig equivalent that doesn't help me. So instead, I'm now going to go to menu number. Please convert that to a decimal for me. And so it's going to take the previous answer right there. And so that's at oh, about five seconds takes five seconds for it to reach 400 feet away from the home plate in the purely horizontal direction. So 5.18575 is what you see right here. All right, solving this for t, we get that t. So now, does it clear the fence? Well, at five seconds, how high is it? To figure that out, we need to plug that in for y. So what we're actually doing now is we're going to say, well, y of 5.18575, which again, still is technically a decimal approximation. It's not precise, but it's rounded close enough. Plug that in to our equation, right? So let's do that on the calculator too. So if I were going to say, okay, I want this number, I'm just going to highlight it, copy it, right? And so I'm going to say, okay, I wanted 3 plus, so I'm looking at, this guy right here, 3 plus 120, I'm going to shrink this so you can see what I'm doing, 3 plus 120 times, oh, see, how interesting, when I highlighted it, it gave me a much longer decimal version, sweet, so 120 times that, times sine of 50 degrees, degrees, close that, minus 16 times that big t value squared. Enter. And it's telling me, right, because I already gave it a decimal, it's going to give me a decimal approximation back, 49.43. So again, what does that mean? That means 49.43 feet, right? When we look at our graph, right, this is... 40 feet tall, and just up here on the parabola, the upside down parabola, that's 49.43 feet. So that's what we've got here. So does it clear the fence? Yes, right? This is going to be 49 feet, and that's definitely more than the 40 foot fence. So, last but not least, Ben's sister 
Eileen is sitting right behind the fence, so how far does she have to reach to catch the ball? We'll look at B. The difference is nine feet.